Okay, so what's up, nerds? Uh, part two of that game I've been working on. Um, today I'm going to show you two characters I've done so far. Um, and then I think I'll do a follow-up with just like a little test round. Um, so, reminder, watch the first one if you haven't seen it. It goes over like the base rules, the standard deck, how it works. Um, uh, the game is planning to be 2v2. I only have like one like character for each side so far. Uh, but I'll figure it out. Um, so far, the characters I've been thinking up, it's very Mortal Kombat inspired. I'm really into that game. Uh, I love the characters. I love the story. I'm just really bad at the games. Um, but these are kind of Mortal Kombat based. So uh, checking it out. Uh, today we have uh, a Sub-Zero type build and a Johnny Cage type build. So tagging out is going to be a central mechanic, especially with two player. Uh, it can be used as a reaction, so, it, as if you don't recall, so when an opponent puts a combo face down uh, and strings together their attacks and whatever, you can play a reaction before. It could be things like a block, or if you want, you could react to tag out. Um, it'll switch in your other character so they can take the hits for you, but it also draws a standard card. So you could draw a block and then block with that character. Um, it just adds a new layer to the game. As you can see, it also can start a new combo. So, if you have something like, like, because you have the hands for, okay, so both characters share one standard hand, right? But they each have their own character hand. So, if you have a high damage attack uh, in one hand, you could do something like tag out at the end of the combo or run back to safety with one character and tag out. There's just different ways you can play it. Um, so there's two tag, sorry, three tag out cards in the Johnny Cage deck. Uh, following it up, he has Nut Punch. So it's a close attack. Uh, it's a classic. He has to split and he punches them in the nuts. Uh, deals 40 extra damage to male opponents. I don't know if I'm going to keep this in or not. I feel like that would be a fun detail, but um whatever if it ends a combo you start a new combo and your next combo can't be reacted to because uh getting nut punched is probably pretty stunning so it's kind of like it's a jab card but you could also finish a combo with high damage if it's against a male opponent uh there's two nut punch cards in the deck as a reminder reminder um how all of this works is that on your turn you draw back up till you have five standard cards in hand and then you draw an additional two character cards so who knows this can kind of just act like an extra jab if you need to extend your combos that sort of thing um shadow kick so before the attack it'll move two spaces forward as far as possible and then it does a close attack for 60 damage and pushes the opponent back too so johnny cage is this weird punish reaction zoner type like he's he's kind of like an all-rounder in some sense uh but shadow kick is going to keep distance between you and your opponent it can deal 50 or 60 most dealings um actually it's split in between and there's four of them um he's a very simple character would probably be the easiest to explain to a new player uh following up he has force ball uh which ends the turn the idea kind of is you could push them back with shadow kick Followed up with a force ball, and they're both pretty high damage, so that's going to be at least at like 140, 150 damage right there. Um, so force ball has a range of six, so if you want, you could shadow kick in, and then run back, and then force ball. Um, so it's pretty safe, uh, option wise. It can hit almost across the entire stage, um, and then I believe. There's four of them dealing 70 or 80 damage, so very strong. Uh, nunchucks are a mid-attack, deal 40 damage, and you can put them on top of the character deck. So this doesn't seem great at first, right? However, being able to put it back on top more or less guarantees you damage every turn. Um, you never know. Like, if your opponent blocks, and then it's like, oh, well, my turn's kind of screwed because I have nothing to do with their block. You can just play nunchucks, put it on top of the character deck, and you'll be guaranteed to have a hit the next turn. Uh, there's only one in the deck, though, because it's kind of a um, simple card. Stunt double. Here's where it gets complicated. So, it's a range of three, deals 30 damage, pushes the opponent back two. 
puts a stun double token in front of them, so the opponent can't move past it, and it disappears after taking 80 damage. So it's kind of just like a wall. Um, note, your opponent's projectiles and ranged attacks can't go through it, but yours can. So if you want to shadow kick, stun double in front of them, and then force ball, something like that, uh, your force ball will go through it and hit the opponent. There's two stun double cards. Uh, insult, which is one of the... Besides tag out, I think insult might be one of the few reaction cards. Um, so if the opponent started the turn two or more spaces away, uh, reduce all their attack damage by 20 until end of turn. Doesn't seem great first looking at it, right? However, this is just till end of turn. So since Johnny Cage is going to be pushing them away with Shadow Kick, that sort of thing, um, he's got that space to insult them, you know, easy to insult them when they're far away. Um, but no, so if they do five hits on you, that's minus 100 damage. So Johnny Cage can kind of stay further away. Um, character specific, I forgot to mention. So each character will have specific traits. Uh, Johnny Cage only has 400 health opposed to the standard 500 uh, because he's going to be moving so far away and kind of zoning you out. Um, it just seemed kind of fair. Uh, he also can have six standard cards in hand instead of the regular five. Um, so he can extend his combos when he is close. Uh, there is three insult cards. And then your final card is Mime Time. So your opponent's next combo hits himself instead. This is extremely strong. There's no real way for them to punish it. So if they put out a combo strain thinking, oh, this will deal like 80 extra damage because there's uh, four hits in the combo, or sorry, 60 extra damage because there's like three or more hits in the combo. Uh, for, I'm trying to remember the range. Um, uh, but no, they're, they're screwed. You just take their combo. Um, keynote, I didn't get to write it on the card yet, but they can block their combo once it becomes yours. Um, so that is an option, but it's a very, very threatening option. And fighting against Johnny Cage, you're going to have to keep that in mind. Uh, Sub-Zero, on the other hand... He's kind of an all-rounder as well, uh, however, in a little bit of a different way. So, he's got two tag-out cards instead, not really his specialty. His real specialty is Ice Ball. So, it can deal um, 10 to 30 damage, I believe. Uh, it has a range of 4. So, you draw a standard card. Your opponent can't react to your next combo if it hits. And if it ends your combo, you start a new combo. So, this kind of like is them getting frozen in place. Um, and it'll let you start up a new combo. You draw another standard card, so maybe you can draw into more cards for your combo. Um, but he has a lot of ways to follow up with it, like Shatter. Uh, so Shatter is a close attack, deals 40 damage, uh, but deals an extra 60 damage to an opponent who can't, uh, react to this combo. Notably, um, if you had Johnny Cage use Nut Punch... And then you had him do a tag out. Um, the opponent would be stunned from Nut Punch. And you would be able to use Shatter on them as well. I don't know if I want to keep that in. I think it's kind of fun synergy. It doesn't really make too much sense though. So whether or not that stays is uh, to be determined. Uh, ice Double can be used as a reaction. So you place an Ice Double token on your space. Uh, it can't be moved past and disappears after 100 damage. You move back too. So this is kind of like Johnny Cage's stun double, except it doesn't deal damage and doesn't push them. It just moves you back. However, stun double can't be used as a reaction. So this is kind of like Sub-Zero's Get Out of Jail free card. Um, um, what I forgot to mention, um, it, and now, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm remembering parts of cards I forgot to add. So stunt double should return their combo back to their hands so they get to choose what to do again. Because um, I would hate for them to lose like an entire turn. Um, but there's two ice doubles. You also have a very simple uh, ice slide. There is one, two, uh, two ice slides. So what they do is they're a close range attack, but they move you forward two first. So 
Ice Slide is just kind of a way for you to get in for your attacks. Maybe you use Ice Ball as your first move. If your opponent doesn't block it, you get that free combo. Ice Slide in, and then, you know, shatter them or something. Um, it's just always more options. Uh, ice Shards, so if it ends a combo, you start a new combo, kind of like a jab, uh, except it has range 4, which is very strong, and you draw a character card. Uh, there's three of these in the deck. And I have been considering um, lowering the number because it just feels a bit unfair. Uh, the way it can extend your combos. Um, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, you also have Ice Trap, um, which if it ends a combo, starts a new combo. You can't tell. Sub-Zero is very combo-oriented, whereas Johnny Cage is kind of like in and out. Um... So if it ends a combo, you start a new combo. Your opponent can't react to the next combo. So you can shatter the opponent after this, which is notable. Um, and if both Ice Trap cards are in your discard pile, draw five standard cards. So this really lets you follow up if you're able to get both down. And note, even if they do block the second Ice Ball, or sorry, Ice Trap, you'll still draw the five standard cards. Um, so Ice Trap is kind of Sub-Zero's other way to go off. It doesn't really deal much damage, and it's not very safe being a close attack, um, which can be parried, uh, but it's just another option. You also have Frost Axe, which um, each jab and uppercut you use this turn deals an additional 20 damage. This can be very strong. Um, that makes your uppercuts go to like at least 100 damage. Your jabs will be about 50 Um so, I mean, being able to string that together is going to be a lot of extra damage. Um, and then moving on to the last card is uh, Ninja Training, which is kind of standard across, like, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, some of the other characters I've been working on. But you reveal cards from the top of the standard deck until you reveal a jab, and then you put all revealed cards into your hand. This includes the jab. So, if you wanted to, like, start off your combo with a fake out, you could put, like, uh, let's say you have first turn you go ninja training walk and your opponent thinks that's some sort of combo so they might block that um well blocks carry over um but like it's gonna draw you into jab cards so you can get more damage with frost axe uh sub-zero is very combo oriented um and pairs pretty well in a matchup against the johnny cage so uh, it'll be interesting to check it out oh. Uh, anyway, I'll show you more when I do, like, a little feature match. Um, I'm currently looking into 3D printing, uh, models. Uh, I'm currently creating a template on, um, I use Pixlr, it's like an image editing so uh, software. So I'm creating a template so I can more or less just slot images in and add text. Um, it'll be a lot easier for creating cards. Um... But let me know what you think. Does any of this seem crazy? It's kind of hard to tell without watching it be played, but um, I don't know. Just let me know. Uh, see ya.